you know what I would actually ask him is, what sort of a manager would you and the Tottenham players like? Because the issue with Nuno is that Nuno, I don't think Nuno fits what Tottenham want. You know, he's not, I don't think he gets the best out of Kane and Son. He doesn't get the best out of Ndombele and Lo Celso. He is, you know, did a good job at Wolves under pretty unique circumstances, but I don't think he is really a good fit for Tottenham in any way. And I would like, I think it would actually suit Tottenham if they had a manager who at the very least could, was kind of compatible with the qualities and characteristics of the best players that Tottenham have. And now you're pressing on the actual bruises, aren't you? You're, you're actually um, opening the, uh, to quote another cliche, to, uh, opening the can of worms. Um, I'm not sure how good Nuno Espirito Santo did do at Wolverhampton Wanderers. I think he was bequeathed by a special relationship with an agent, a group of players who were in the championship way, way uh, too good for that level and then found the actual level are all good. You know, it, it's the... It's the the reserve team of the Portuguese national eleven. They're probably the seventh best team in England, and there they were, the seventh best team in England. Um, I suppose you could argue he has to put them out onto the pitch and all the rest of it. And it's not, it's not un un instructive that you know he had an in and out relationship with the Dharma Traore, exactly the sort of player um, that most managers would be building a team uh, around. Um, I, again, I, we've talked about Harry Kane. And we'll sort of come on to Nuno because I've got plenty to say about that myself, um, which takes us to um, the absolute nonsense of uh, during the protracted and publicly almost humiliating search for anyone to take this job. We're back here, Jack, to Levy's. I mean, he put the words Levy doesn't say much. So anything he says, I take, I take it this is what he wants to convey. The stuff about the Spurs DNA. Attacking, dynamic, forward-looking. I can't remember the exact Free formulation flowing. of words. Free-flowing. That was three months ago, and he's got exactly the opposite. What is he thinking sat up there um, staring out Bond villain style across his demence? Yeah, and the most damning thing about that is that when the, when the free-flowing statement was released, which was when Wolves announced there would be that Nuno would be leaving the club. At that point, Tottenham ruled out Nuno. They, you know, the view at Tottenham was that, well, it's a good coach, but doesn't play the sort of football that, that we've just said that we want. Which was at least which, honest, which was yeah. at least an honest appraisal of the situation. You which might get a worse coach who might be more attacking, but Nuno is what Nuno is. Which goes to show what a huge U-turn it was that they have decided in the end when they got to um, all the way through uh, what ten weeks of the managerial process? Oh, actually, maybe this guy's football. Maybe this guy who we ruled out on the basis that his football didn't quite suit our our committed, you know, our kind of public public commitment to our DNA. Uh, they decided to backtrack on it and give him the job anyway. So yeah, clearly it was a shambles, and clearly Nuno didn't really fit with the. Uh, what Tottenham talked about is what they were looking for in the new manager. And that's, you know, that is apparent every time you watch them play. But that just goes to show what a, a mess it was this summer, moving between different options, different types of manager and all the rest of it. The maddest thing about that is they haven't gone against the principles they've set out themselves to bring in like a high profile manager who is demonstrably really successful, which is effectively what they did when they brought in Mourinho two mm-hmm. years previously. They've gone out, they've gone out and done it to bring in a guy who's sort of just been just been mutually consented, quote unquote, out of Wolves. Uh, and I think who, who the perception of whom was that he played probably even more negative football than Mourinho. Yeah. Like, like it wasn't like they bring in an elite manager who, uh, you know, was going to be, it was like a once in a lifetime opportunity to bring in like a sure. manager who was obviously had a massive profile, which which clearly Mourinho did, whatever yes, we might I, think about. I, I, I felt the, Mourinho yeah. was a mistake at the time, but at least it was a gamble worth taking, wasn't yeah. it? You could argue yeah. that. You could see the logic in it. It's like a Hail Mary pass, but you could yeah. see the logic yeah. in it. But with Nuno, I don't think anyone, uh, I don't think anyone ever thought like, oh, well, that's, that's a shrewd move. Yeah, it never other, felt like a good fit. The other week, I went, um, the other week I was talking to a, um, uh, a manager currently operating, a, a current manager in England, and right. He, and he said to me, after Mourinho, they basically had two options. You can either go for a big name manager to replace him, like someone like a Conte or a Pochettino or perhaps a Zidane, who is such a big shot that he will kind of encourage the players to, and they'll all rally behind him. 
Or you can replace Mourinho with a completely different style of play, whether that's a kind of uh, Ragnick, Hassenhuttle, Ten Hag, Brendan Rodgers, um, Hansi Flick type person who will completely change how Tottenham play. And that will kind of encourage a big reaction out of the players because they'll have to learn something completely new. And he was saying that it's kind of crazy that Tottenham have gone from, have managed to do neither of those things. They've gone for somebody who isn't a big name, hasn't got a CV, isn't, you know, can't kind of win the players around the strengths of his personality, but who also happens to play a style of football really similar to Mourinho. And is, who it will not be able to, is it his disciple of Mourinho? And who will not be able to kind of uh, instill any kind of different style of play or provoke any reaction through a more attractive style. So in, in that sense, it kind of, and, and again, this is all just the opinion of this manager who I was talking to, to the other day. In that sense, it's almost a kind of worst of both worlds appointment. You know, it's neither one thing nor the other. And it doesn't help, of course, when his master plans... Um, and I mean, it's worth iterating here, I think, that uh, I've got nothing against Nuno Espirito uh, Santo as a man. I don't know him, but everything I hear about him and the few times you see him talk about anything other than how well his team played, um, he seems like a perfectly decent human being. I, I want to I get that across. I don't want to get into a Steve Bruce situation where I'm just slagging him off uh, for the kind of bloke he is. That's not fair because... Um, football managers come in all shapes, sizes and personality traits. Of course they do. But, you know, when you send the, when you send the reserves to play a, a European uh, conference league game, they get beat. And then the ones who are sat at home um, apparently preparing with a laser-like precision for the game against West Ham, but I suspect just going through the motions again and training thinking... Here's another week of this, not, not getting the ball forward and all the rest of it. Um, and they lose as well. It is a terrible look for the manager. Um, I, I'm sorry that, you know, we live in the real world where people of the of the self-appointed standing in society of Daniel Levy and even maybe Fabio Paritici as well, um, they are not going to sack someone that they just appointed because it makes them look mugs. But I'm going to say again what I said after the Arsenal game. I now know this is going to fail. I know it as certainly as the sun will rise. And yet nothing can dissuade me from the view that that right now, right now, James, Spurs need to change the manager because I, I, I don't blame him entirely. The players are clearly not well, doing everything they should do as well. But, they can't, but they're not going to do it for him, are they? Well, it's interesting you say that because it's kind of a month maybe before the end of the Mourinho era. Um, I, I tweeted that Mourinho wasn't like the biggest problem at Spurs and getting rid of him wasn't going to solve all those problems overnight. You know, there were far bigger issues at play. Sure. Um, but it was a thing they were going to need to do to progress as a football club. Uh, and it was a thing that was going to make, basically make the, ha the fans happy again and like allow them to have a bit more belief uh, and a sense that this thing was all suddenly moving in the right direction again. And I... That, kind of feel quite similarly about the situation now. I mean, and that feels like a bigger statement in October rather than March of a season. And, you know, when a guy had been in charge for the best part of 18 months, and obviously Nuno's only had, what, three. Um, but, but I feel the same now, to be honest, that, as you say, it feels like it's not really going to work. I can't really envisage a way in which, in which it works in a, any kind of meaningful way. I mean, you could see, you know, they could kind of scrape to sixth place if a couple of other clubs, you know, if Leicester don't suddenly kind of fly up the table, which to be fair, it looks like they're, they're starting to come into form. So mm -hmm. they would obviously be a threat for a top six place now where two, three weeks ago, it looked like maybe they were going to have a bad season. Um, beyond that, I just, I just don't see it being a success. And uh, wh why wait? Why? why would you, what, why, why not take the punt and, <laughs> and try and make it work when this season is still relatively young? We're a quarter of the way in and it's not like, you know, the points are totally so bad that, there's absolutely no chance of them achieving anything. They're still in all those cup competitions as of the time we record this. Maybe that'll be different by Wednesday night. Mm. Um, I, you know, there's still plenty to play for this season. And oh, um, I, that, I kind that, of feel that, like there's an, there's an opportunity to just kind of say, okay, let's try something different. And I appreciate, that, you know, they're not going to want to embarrass themselves like they did over the, over the summer. But although, although their embarrassment fair, shouldn't be the biggest factor in what happens next. Absolutely. And let's be fair, they, 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 it's not like they've not got practice. I think I'm right in saying that in the Premier League era, um, no club uh, has sacked more managers mid-season than Tottenham. Um, in fact, I'm, I, I don't have to question that. I know that to be the case. 
Um, so this is what they do. Um, and, and I have to say, with all due respect to Nuno, get on with it. Um, because the, the evidence to their own eyes, despite the manager blinking into the lights of the TV cameras afterwards saying, I thought we did all right there. No, sir, you did not do all right. 